In today's video, we are going to be planting up five combinations that are the perfect mix of annuals for hummingbird and butterfly gardens. Hi, I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings, and the first container we're going to plant up today is called Tickled Pink. So we're going to take a look here at the elements that are used in this planter. Most of the planters that I'm using today are a 15 inch container or planter, just so you have size reference. And many of the, plant, the planters will have about six or seven plants in them. So let's take a look here at the tickled pink combination. The first plant that we will be doing, actually I took the tag out earlier, is the unplugged pink salvia. So this is gonna make an excellent thriller in this combination. This is the key plant in this combination to attracting those hummingbirds to the mix. Next, we have the beautiful Super Bell's Black Current Punch. Black Current Punch features beautiful magenta flowers with that deep, almost black center eye. And then to add a little sparkle and a little whimsy fun, we have the Euphorbia Diamond Frost. Diamond Frost is an excellent thriller, nice and wispy, and it just kind of fills in all those gaps in the container. And then to add a little trailing aspect along with our Super Bells, we have the Sweet Caroline Raven Sweet Potato Vine. Beautiful near dark black foliage. Look how beautifully that's gonna pair with this black currant punch super bells. So let's go ahead and get planting. We're gonna start off with our salvia unplugged pink and that is gonna go in the center of our container. That is the thriller and it's going to be the middle here of our pot. Now, if your pots have a side, meaning like a back side, a front side, or however, you could plant this also in the back of your container if it was gonna go up against a wall. Next, we've got the sweet potato vine, the sweet Caroline Raven. And I'm gonna be planting this in the front of the pot. This is gonna have that trailing over right up in the front effect in this container. Next, we've got the Super Bell's Black Current Punch. I'm going to plant that next to the sweet potato vine. We're going to take the second one and we're going to plant this directly across, making a crisscross pattern. Next, we're going to take the Euphorbia Diamond Frost, plant that up in the front, and again, creating that crisscross pattern, we're going to plant our second Diamond Frost in the back corner. So before I started planting, I did remove a little soil out of this container because it was filled all the way to the top. I would prefer adding soil to my containers after they're planted, opposed to taking it out as I'm going. So I'm gonna just go ahead and fill in here around the gaps, making sure that this container is full of soil. One thing you'll notice is we are using fresh, brand new potting soil. That is important for you as well when you are planting up your containers at home. Do not use your old potting mix because there's no nutrients left in that soil. There's a lot of roots generally, and it's just not the best living environment for these newly planted plants that you will be planting up. Go ahead and get them all tucked in, packed in nice and tight. Put the tags in the container, that way the lucky owner of this pot will know exactly what plants and how many plants are in this tickled pink combination. The next hummingbird combination we're going to be planting up is called On the Rocks. Another thing I should mention is we are planting these for full sun locations, although some of them might be able to handle more of a part shade. So the thriller in this combination is the Rockin' Deep Purple Salvia. This is the key element to adding and attracting hummingbirds to your garden. Next, we are planting the Super Bell's Grape Punch. This is one of my favorite purple super bells. I love the beautiful purple flowers with that deep, dark, velvety purple center. It pairs well with just about any color. We also are adding some Laguna Ultraviolet Lobelia in, and this is gonna be kind of a nice, kind of a trailing type annual to this combination. Beautiful purple flowers. Also, no container is complete without a super bina. And here we have the Superbina Sparkling Amethyst. This is one of our most popular Superbinas that we sell. And this beautiful tricolor flower is certainly to grab anyone's attention. So for this container combination, get my soil kind of mixed up, we're gonna be planting the salvia right in the center of the planter. Now 
Then we've got two of three different varieties. So we've got the Lobelia. And I'm going to be planting these in kind of a triangle to kind of give you a vision of how they're going. So we've got the Lobelia, the Verbena, the Superbells. And we'll continue that pattern one more time until we've made it all the way around the container. So I did a pretty good job of judging how much soil to remove from this container before I started planting. So we are sitting here pretty and not needing to fill in any of the gaps. We also are going to be adding in, and I need to do this to the first container I planted, our Bioline Biologicals. So this has good bugs in it that are going to go after any bugs that may be in this combination. This is just kind of a nice protection that we put into our planters. Um, not to say that there's bugs on them now, but as you know, as the season goes on, thrip, spider mite, all are some of those things that can um, creep into our hanging baskets. And this is something we're using to protect the hanging baskets from the spider mite and thrip. So there's living little guys in here. We're just going to tuck that in and he's going to protect this basket here for probably about four to six weeks. The next combination is called Butterfly Love. Our thriller in this combination is the Unplugged So Blue Salvia. So this is going to be a tall upward salvia, a great thriller in this combination, along with three of the luscious citron lantana, the hummingbirds and butterflies, they love the lantana. And look at that beautiful yellow color flowered. Also, we're putting a couple of the trailing red Mizu vines in, which is a great plant, not only for its beautiful little red flowers, but also its glossy, waxy, variegated foliage. As you can tell, this, this planter here tends to run a little bit more with drought tolerant plants. But that being said, that salvia is going to create quite a robust root system, so you will need to keep on top of watering this planter, even though we are using a lot of the more drought tolerant annuals. So in the center, we will be planting the salvia. And it's always so amazing to watch these plants as they continue to grow and develop. These, these planters here, they will be ready in about four to six weeks to head out to our retail floor. So we have three of the lantana. So I'm gonna plant those into a triangle. And as you notice, these pots here had some of the biologicals in them. These have been in here for probably about four weeks. I'm just gonna leave it in there because if there's any bugs, that good bugs that are still living, we wanna utilize them. So we'll just leave them here in the container. planting in kind of a triangular pattern. The one thing that's a little trippy for me on this is we're only using two of these Mizu vine, so things aren't very symmetrical. And if you've watched any of my videos before, you'll notice that kind of symmetry is kind of my thing. So this is kind of just a little cringy to me that we're only using two. But two is plenty to fill out this container and that's why we're using two. How do you decide where to put it? Wow, the decision's kind of there for you. You're going to have two lantana that are next to each other, and then you're going to put the mizu between the other two lantana. So we do need to add in a little soil with this one. So we'll go ahead and tuck in around the gaps. This is a perfect time to tell you when you are growing hanging baskets and containers, the most important thing to keeping your containers and your hanging baskets looking fabulous all summer long. The trick is, and the saying is, feed them and they'll be fabulous. And what I mean by that is it's very important that you are feeding your annual containers at least once a week with your favorite water soluble fertilizer. We'll go ahead and poke our favorite up on the screen along with the link so that you, if you're interested in purchasing the Proven Winners Water Soluble Fertilizer, you can keep your plants looking fabulous all summer long by just applying that once a week during your regular watering. All right, 
that one is ready to go and grow. Next, we have Hummingbird Haven. Oh, doesn't that name just sound so lovely? So what are the plants we're using in this mix? This mix has the unplugged So Blue Salvia. You can notice that we've used this a couple times in our container combinations. Again, excellent thriller. We also have the Kufia Vermillionaire. So this is the one plant that if you're looking to just poke little plants in your garden, that the hummingbirds are gonna love. Kufi Vermillionaire gets rave reviews, not only from the hummingbirds, but from those that are planting it as well. We've got the Superbell's Dream Sickle, which is a beautiful orange, really a nice, crisp, clean orange uh, Superbell's. Beautiful, kind of a nice, soft, tangerine kind of color. And then, of course, Superbell's Yellow, which I think is one of the most vibrant, cleanest, clearest yellow Superbell's on the market. So how are we going to lay these out in this container? So as we have with the others, the salvia takes center stage. Right in the middle of the planter. Around it, we've got two of the kufia and two yellow and two orange of the superbells. So those we will be planting in an every other pattern. And I'm actually, as I'm doing this, I'm going to go opposite from each other, which again, is going to still create that every other pattern. You'll notice I'm pinching the pot to get the plants removed from the pot, but you'll also notice I'm not ruffling or tasseling the roots at all. We just plant them right as they come out of the pot. So this is a beautiful mix of purples, yellows, and oranges. Go ahead and put the tags in. Fill in around the gaps. Inquiring minds want to know, gloves or no gloves when you're planting up your container combinations? You can tell I'm no gloves. All right, so there we have it, all planted up, Hummingbird Haven. And last in our Hummingbird series is the Hipster combination. It's kind of a fun hip name, isn't it? Let's take a look at what's in Hipster. First off, we have the Graceful Grasses Prince Tut Grass. This is gonna make an excellent thriller, upright plumes, beautiful little, I'm gonna call them umbrella looking little plumes once it goes to plume. A great thriller for combinations. Also, Superbell's yellow, as we mentioned before, excellent yellow. It's a nice yellow that actually matches with just about every flower color. Also, we have the Supertunia Really Red, which is a nice vibrant red color that's going to pair really well with the yellow, purple, and red in this combination. And last, we're doing this Superbina Cobalt Blue. This was a very popular Superbina last year with its intense, bright purple blooms. An excellent plant for hummingbird combinations. So let's go ahead and get this planted. In the center will be the Prince Tut grass. And we're gonna go ahead and plant around it. Like the other combinations, there are six flowering annuals that will be going around this Prince Tut grass. Again, we will be using the every other pattern. You don't have to use every other pattern. You can plant this up in whatever, whatever pattern you want. If you wanted your yellows to be blocked, your purples to be blocked, and your reds to be blocked, that's perfectly fine. This is, this is the nice thing with planting is you have the freedom to really do whatever works best for you and with whatever you like for your containers. And even though we're doing these combinations and telling you the varieties we're using today, let this be inspiration for you. Maybe you like what we're doing, but have another idea. Maybe instead of yellow, you would wanna mix in orange. You have the freedom to do that. Just use this as a starting point to let your mind just go wild. Fill in around the gaps as we've been doing. Also placing our tags in the pot. And just to reiterate, the things you need to take home when you're planting up your container combinations. Fresh soil is a must. 
and fertilizing them every week will give you profuse blooms that will last from when you get them planted until the end of the summer. You may find mid-season they need a little haircut. Don't be afraid to take out your trimmers and give them a little pruning. That'll create branching and in the end will result you with even more flowers and an even more flowerful container combination. If you have any questions or comments on today's presentation, please feel free to leave it below. And if you're new to our station, we welcome you to subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings.